This video is going to talk about linear equations in two variables. And we're going to learn a little bit about those kinds of equations. So the first thing we're going to learn is about x-intercepts and y-intercepts. Intercept sounds like when you cross something. So the x-intercept is when it crosses the x-axis. That would be this point right here. And then it is always going to have the point we go across to the x value, but then we don't go up or down. So it's always going to look like a0, some number and 0. y is equal to 0. And for the y-intercept, it's where it crosses the y-axis. In this case, it would be this point on this line. And again, we start at 0, 0. We don't go left or right in order to be able to find an y-axis. So we have to stay at the origin and then just go down. So it's going to have a 0 and then some number for b. For the y-intercept, so x is going to be equal to 0. So in an x-intercept, the y is always 0. In a y-intercept, the x is always 0. So the opposite variable is 0 when you're trying to find an intercept. So now we want to just be able to graph. Now, we talked about x and y-intercepts because they're very nice points. When you put let a variable be 0, nice things happen. So let's look at this point. We have this equation, and I'm going to let x be 0 and see if I can solve this equation. So x is 0. That means that I have negative y equal to negative 8. And if I divide by negative 1, or y is going to be equal to positive 8. And then if I let y be 0, I would have 4x and then minus 0 equal to our negative 8. And if we divide by our 4, because this drops out, then x is going to be equal to negative 2. So x is negative 2, y was 0. So you can see that you can pick either an x or a y. It doesn't matter which one you pick. We just want to pick a point so we can find nice numbers, if at all possible. So since y is all by itself, I think I'm going to pick another x. Let's let x be, oh, let's say 1. So I'm going to come over here again and try. 4 times 1, which is x, minus y is going to be equal to negative 8. Well, this time I have 4, so I need to subtract 4 from both sides. So negative y is going to be equal to negative 12. And if I divide by negative 1, then I'm going to end up with y is equal to positive 12. So we ended up with 12. Let's so 0. 8, start at 0 and go up to 8, and this is 6, 7, 8. So I just made my graph for that one. Negative 2 and then 0 would stay on the x-axis. That would be our x-intercept. This would be our y-intercept. And then 1, 12. Well, that's going to be, this is 8, 9, 10, 11, something like this. Okay, there's the point that I wanted. And if I draw my line, I can see that's about right. Okay, so now I've drawn my graph, and I've used the intercepts to help me find that. Two points to find a line, remember, and the x-intercept and the y-intercept were two points. And then I just had to find a third point to make my graph more accurate. Let's try again. This time we have y and equal 3x minus 0. So let's let x be 0 to start off with. So y is equal to 3 times that 0, which is x, minus 3. Well, anything times 0 is just 0, so y is equal to negative 3. Now let's let y be 0. So 0 is equal to 3 times x minus 3. That's a 3. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And I'm going to end up with 3 equal to 3x. And when I divide by 3 to get x by itself, then x is going to be equal to 1. Now I just need to find one other nice point. Let's try negative 1, just to get a negative number in there. So y is going to be equal to 3 times negative 1 for x, minus 3. Well, this is negative 3 minus 3, which is y. So y is going to be equal to negative 6. So if we did it right, all our points should draw, lie on a line. So let's try. 0, negative 3 would be this point right here. 
1, 0, we go across 1 and then we stay on the x-axis. So now we found the two intercepts. And negative 1, negative 6, we're going in the right direction. That would be this point right here. And those do look like they lie in a line. And now we've graphed our line. Now, what happens if we have a line like this one? y equal 2. Hmm. I don't have any x's, but I could say that's the same thing as plus 0x. So let's try 0 for x. So y is equal to 2 plus 0 times 0, which is really just y is equal to 2. Now let's try 1 for x. So y is equal to 2 plus 0 times 1. Again, this cancels out, so y is equal to 2. And if I tried negative 2, I'd have y is equal to 2 plus 0 times negative 2. And again, y is equal to 2. What this really means is y is always 2. So let's see what that graphs. 0, 2 would be this point right here. 1, 2 would be this point right here. And negative 2 and then up to 2 would be this point right here. So we can see that if we have a y equal equation with just one variable, there's only one variable in that equation, and it's a y equal to a constant, we actually have a horizontal line. And if we have this example, x is equal to negative 4, there's no y here, but we could say plus 0y. Well, in this case, 0 is always nice to multiply by, so let's pick y values. Let's try 0. So x minus is equal to negative 4. That doesn't look like a negative 4. Let's make it a negative 4. Plus 0 times 0, which is y. And we have x is negative 4. Can you guess what's going to happen? Let's let x, y be negative 3. So x is equal to negative 4 plus 0 times negative 3. 0 times anything is 0, so x is, you guessed it, negative 4. I could try 6. Let y be 6. Or let's let it be, uh, we can let it be 6. x is equal to negative 4 plus 0 times 6, which cancels out. And x is equal to negative 4. So negative 4 over here, 0, would be this point right here. Negative 4, negative 3 would come down 1, 2, 3. And over to negative 4 and up to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see that now, this time we only had an x in our equation, and that gave us a vertical line. Up and down is a vertical line.